Hi, Eric here. First ever episode over a long, long time indeed, and a strong comeback in 2023. Here we brought you an unboxed video of a new addition in the Royal family, the WS1600 series. This is one of the first three they released with the turquoise markings, the WS1600H8AV. On the exterior, there's no significant changes compared to the AE1200 or AE1300 series. Same old design, yet module has now changed to 3556, not 1200s, 3299s or 1300s, 3426s. That obviously leads to the most important change of this new series. As I mentioned, there were three models Casio released. We got grey with turquoise, blue with yellow, and black with orange. We can also see the upper part of the display was colorized in the same shade like those markings, turquoise, yellow, and orange. At first glance, it almost looked like AE1300 without the signature triple eyes, and a slightly bigger lower part, but essentially we've tested their quote unquote new function it is actually the same Live 1300, just in a different way to present. How so? Let's go through those functions one by one and you'll see. Top right, we got the usual backlight and good old stock orange, of course it is, which we can and already did mod it in a different color. Well, check out our website, sksmod.com. Again, sksmod.com has various modding solution for your timepiece, making a signature timepiece for your very own. Even the lettering layout is the same with AE1300 series, illuminator and 10 year battery, also a countdown timer in the middle of the faceplate with sharp color, 100 meter water resistance, alarm, chronograph and whatnot. Just the usual stuff throughout the entire Royal family, or more so, most generic Casio watches. It's really about the look or aesthetic of it that really intrigue us. In order to achieve this new layout, a new module must have been used. In this case, we got a new edition 3556. And we continue. The band, nothing really changed. PUR material as always. Plastic buckle and mud with Casio logo. So ultimately, I think this module is interchangeable with our models from 1200 or 1300. The dimension looks about right, and we will see if that's true in later part of this video. And let's take a quick look on these two remaining models. This a throughout wild blue color, but it is not as vibrant in naked eye than the camera can capture. Casio's rendering on their website actually get the gist, so they add it with a sharp accent color, I reckon, to make it pop from the bunch. Not really my cup of tea, I'm kind of the uh, low-key stealthy type, so this one here is right up in my alley. Black and silver, or some might say it's gunmetal on the bezel, and black being the major color scheme. But that matte silver and orange accent adds a bit of playful taste to it, if a mile of clothes, of course. If I'm rocking a stock build with no moss, this is definitely my pick. Since there's no major difference fundamentally with 1300 series, then how about comparison with 1200? We can see different orientation in usage right away throughout the layouts and etc. 1200 is incredibly serious about its world time function, to a point an actual map is drawn onto the part of the display, but a general shape of the case 
buttons location the same thing. Then we have the display, day and days of the week, ordinary stuff, but these two progress bar are connected to seconds in general. For every second pass, you will see cycle in the top bar, and every 10 seconds, you gain one slot in the lower bar. And needless to say, the top right corner clock is an indicator for every minute in a 10 minute session. Three slots was missing meaning this is the 3 from 33 past 9. For timekeeping mode, this is just a fun way to show the time and they pretty much convey similar presentation in next couple mode or function. Press button to cycle through the modes. Next, we have stopwatch, doing exactly what it's capable of, measure elapsed time. And next, timers with presets or 9 combinations 10, 12, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45 minutes to do cooking or training wherever that it may fit. It's funny that in stopwatch mode, the top progress bar was going forward and in here, it was going backward. They stops as well if you stop the timer. Now this mode is the theme of our new series, the countdown timer mode. There are total 9 sets of interval training timer you can individually adjust. To configure them, long press the top left button to cycle through, and long press again on lower left button to adjust each timer's duration, and each of them are up to 59 minutes and 55 seconds, with 5 seconds increasing or decreasing. Meaning, using this you can say, do a 3 minutes stretch and 5 minutes running and 1 minute rest. Rinse and repeat that into those 9 timers. It will also give you a beep when the timer zeroes out. Press the lower right button to start the timer now on display. And press it again to stop. Not only for training, anything needed multiple timer to set alert, this would come in very handy. Although this series is mainly focused on personal training and all, but it didn't leave out the signature function where sets the entire royal family apart, still got the world time function, cycle through different country and read out their current time. And next is alarm mode, press lower right button to turn on and off functions, wave light pattern means daily alarm is on, and the bell icon is hourly chime. Next mode, you will cycle back to timekeeping mode, so on and so forth. And now the fun part begins. We will start to tear it down to parts and see how it's actually built on the inside. So first, we will move all four screws holding the case back. And that will view us the module of this very WS1600. On first glance, this is very similar to AE1200 layout. And the retaining steel bracket mod with Casio, contacting spring for piezo electric shit on the case back, making the beeping sound. And the same battery, CR2025. And this is how the module looks like without faceplate on. But part of the display was colorized directly in the module, not a piece of colored plastic on the faceplate, hence the vivid color I think. Although display layout and certain function is different, the general dimension and shape is completely the same throughout AE1200, 1300 and WS1600 series. And even the backlight is the same, orange and on both sides which we can resolve us with different color ones. So faceplate. Well, faceplate itself seems stuck inside the case, as if there were adhesive to it. And there you go, there it is. 
well, didn't see this move before. So 1200 and 1300 just fall right off. Probably Casio afraid of this might wiggle with shock, maybe. And they did the same thing to Casio watches with the Dow's and our markets as well. Just go double side the tape. Okay, so finally got it out, and the faceplate itself is slightly matte as always, with Chris printing as well. Plastic too, you can see where they pump in the material for injection molds. As I just mentioned, this is the same dimension like any other 1200 or 1300, so it's a perfect fit for our modern kit which we are going to demonstrate how later with some exciting upgrades after these past months. But what you might want to know is if you were to purchase modern kits from our site and apply so to your existing watch upgrade, you'll be needing three components from the original watch, faceplate, module and case bag, and among which Case bag is very crucial, mind that you will have to provide your own case bag to complete the mod. Consequently, this is not included in the kit. Obviously, we will use all these three into our modern kit, but we will pick one as the start of our demonstration, and of course it's going to be the turquoise one. Yet will we not, the remaining two will make a great appearance again in the end of this video. So this is what you will get from our parcel, hard cardboard balls on the most exterior, paper sleeve on our branding and motor on, then a standard paper box inside that contains a piece of cushion pad, also main parts of the kit and miscellaneous tools. This piece of cushion pad is for operating the watch upon. A set of rubber band if you chose to include in the bundle with FKM material. You got the case in a foam pouch, under it you have some new rubber gasket in small plastic bag. Bunch of screwdrivers and tweezers for installation. Screws are custom fitted to our own case. Remember not to use original ones during installation or missing this in your carpet. Same to this spring bars, mind that it is only available when purchasing with rubber band like this yellow one that we made a bit of time ago, total in 10 colorways, check them out in our shop. And this, this is our main upgrade lately, totally renovating the old bracelet into a stronger and better version. First we have matching finishing now, matte and polished, then with quick release spring bar for maintenance or accessory changing in a very quick manner. And coming after that in entirely milled clubs, all visible parts are covered and treated with according finishing and hardened coating. Last but not least, screws are replaced with swivel joint ones, more secure, and it's highly unlikely that it will unscrew itself out under long term use. In the newest revised batch of casing and bracelet, we've fine tuned the bead blasted matte surface to have the best metal sheen as possible. First, you grab the case and differentiate the orientation. If you chose the engraved variant, that is, because the internal faceplate and module has to follow that as well. If it is still ones that you purchase without any markings, then either side is fine. Faceplate as well following the same principle, all the text in the same orientation from top to bottom, otherwise it will be such a hassle to disassemble it again just to flip it to the other side. Next thing, the most important part, module, again orientation, but one extra note here that there are four pieces of metal around the module which correspond four buttons outside of the case. In order to get proper actuation and pressing experience, you have to tuck those metal nicely under the button stem, making a solid contact 
that both of them are pushing against each other. When it's done correctly, the module should look like this. Just plastic studs and some other components extended from the module. And you can see it is completely sunken and not one bit is tilted up or down. Before closing the case back in, check if there's any dust or misalignment inside. If there is, then reverse the process, solve the issue, and do it all over again. Put the guts back in, testing the buttons is very crucial as well. See if any one of them cannot function properly. If not, repeat the process of tucking those contact points till all buttons function as best as they can. Mind that we haven't put the case back on, so there is no beeping sound. Now, before the case back, still one more component we need, that being the rubber gasket. Otherwise, you will not have proper water resistance on this timepiece. We included them in the modern kit, and you will need to place the gasket on the rice board as well. There is a specific trench on the outer rim that fits the gasket perfectly. Finally, the actual case back. Again, look out for the orientation. Have all the tags in the same orientation, then you are good to go. Find those tags on either back of the module or in front of the timepiece as reference. Then get four of our screws to secure the case back, not the original ones. Remember, if the screws are too small to pick up with finger, you can try using the tweezer we included and place them into the holes to prepare before screwing them in. When you've done all that, use the 2.0mm screwdriver to start making its way in diagonally in the pairs of two. First, turning the screws counterclockwise until you feel or hear a click. Only then to do clockwise turns and continue to make sure all four screws are halfway in and catching the threads. Then you shall tighten them little by little and one by one in the cycle, not all the way in on single screw at once. And stop when there is certain resistance on the grip of your screwdriver. That is a sign telling you shouldn't go forwards anymore. All methods just to avoid broken screws and ruined threads. In this way, the rubber gasket inside will be evenly compressed, filling all the gap between case back and the case, therefore creating excellent water resistance level. On buttons, there are self-dissolved plastic film attached, meant to protect easily damaged parts. You can wet a piece of tissue or paper towel to rub it off. If there is more stubborn residual hard to get off, use rubbing alcohol or duct tape would be more effective. Now we attach the latest version of bracelet. Having quick release spring bar on this will only need your fingertips to maneuver. No longer limited with tools anymore. Look out for the opening direction of the claps, where the opening is pointing and that side of bracelet is where you should install on the 6 o'clock of the case. Remember the orientation and flip both of the parts to their back side. You can insert one side of the spring bar first and pull the tab on the other side and let it slip in. Or pinch both tabs on the spring bar and place the end link directly from above. And repeat the same process again on the other half of the bracelet. And there you go, we now have a completed build, a functional timepiece ready to put on wrist. But we will still need some sizing on the bracelet to fit the wrist. Hence, we will need a 1.5mm screwdriver in the kit to remove certain length, and it's extremely easy to maneuver. And maybe some people are still wondering, what is this kind of screw? Well. By the structure, you can see the threaded part and bolt part are segmented, thus the freely moving bolt section. Traditionally, they are usually together as one piece, but that causes a problem. Under long-term use, those screws tend to slowly unscrew itself out from the threads. Because as your wrist moves, links moves as well. 
that kind of movement eventually conveyed to the boat and to according threads. But now, even though it will go through same process, but only the boat moves. You can do a flip or take a dive, and the most important threaded parts sit still as they always should be. So back to the chalk pick. You separate the bracelet where you want it to, take out the screw, and take out lengths as many as it fits your wrist. Connect both lengths where it was separated, put the screw back in, then box your uncle. But don't forget to keep those extra length and screw in a safe place. There is nothing too hard in the modding process if you took a quick look skimming through this tutorial, then I think you are good to finish all this under 10 minutes. But one more thing though, these parts are all CNC'd from solid chunk of steel, coated with hardened layer on top, and treated accordingly for different finishing. For more in-depth specs, you can either check out sksmod.com in YL category, or click up above for a video we made when it's first released. We've really come a long way perfecting this modding family for months and months and months ago. Without further ado, let's bring out the other two 1600 with our mocks on and see how it works on those new modules. This is a full silver in matte that we just done modding. There is also a silver and black variant based on the bezel changing and a black with silver in reverse, much like Panda and Reverse Panda, or so they call. And this is also in matte but fully black. Both exude a very tough to watch characteristic and that's what you imagine a soldier will wear in the field. As you can imagine these two are the most popular colorway in our collection and the short fit the title. And this here is even more badass, all CNC and completely in bronze. You can see even though it is newly assembled and it starts to form patina already. And here my friend is exactly the reason why you should collect one. The more you spend time with it to cultivate and the more unique the surface pattern will grow, eventually have a signature timepiece of your very own. Besides matte browns, we still have a polished version as well, along with many many more modern parts and options. What you see here is just the tip of the iceberg, follow me and I'll show them all to you. <laughs> 